In our last video, we explored every option to assassinate NCR President Aaron Kimball. With the President of the NCR dead, the Legion has shaken any faith the people of the Mojave had in the NCR. The second battle for Hoover Dam is just around the corner, but before we check in with Kaisar, there are a few more things we can do in the Mojave Wasteland to further solidify the Legion's victory. We recall from Episode 9 that if Wulpez and Kulta was alive, he gives us a quest to meet with a woman named Martina Grosbeck, whom he's worried is being harassed by Omerta thugs inside Vault 21. So donning an NCR disguise, we head to the Strip and enter Vault 21. We don't find anyone in the gift shop, so opening the maintenance door, we can head down the stairs to enter the Vault 21 Casino and Hotel. We head down two more flights of stairs to the casino floor, where we learn that our assassination of President Kimball is already starting to do its job. Our own president murdered. Things aren't looking good. To find Martina, we pass through the cafeteria and head all the way to the back of the vault, where we find some of the previous individual vault resident rooms. These have since been turned into hotel rooms. Inside one, we find three Omerta thugs cornering Martina Grosbeck. Looks like we arrived just in the nick of time. This ain't your business. Walk off and forget you saw anything. What's going on here? Omerta business. Now fuck off or else. We have three options. We can say, do whatever you want. I just want to loot the room. Deal. In which case we lose karma and the thugs murder Martina. But saving her life was not necessary. By simply talking with the thugs, we complete this step in the quest. If we choose this option, we can head back to the fort and check in with Wulpez and Kulta. Wulpez, Martina is dead. I see. Was it ill fortune? Or is Kaisar's faith in you misplaced? Either way, it's done. Now remember, Wolpe has wanted Martina alive because Martina was an informant. With Martina dead, the Legion loses out on an important source of information. But one thing I've learned by doing these Legion quests is there appears to be no real consequence for failing. All we miss out on is a connection to another possible quest. Alternatively, back at Vault 21, we can instead choose to attack the Omerta thugs. You have no idea who you're messing with! Bosses don't Watch like no trouble. I'm gonna make a bitch me out of you! Clip your sorry ass! I'm gonna clip your sorry ass. I didn't realize till I already attacked that my character was at one-third health, so this battle freaked me out a little bit. Thankfully, they all wear squishy suits, which made it easy to cut through them with my bowie knife. With the thugs dead, we complete this part of the quest. We can head back to Wolpes to check in, but before we do, we can optionally talk with Martina here. Thank you. They were going to kill me. Are you all right? I'll be fine. Eventually. Save your thanks. This was a job, nothing more. Oh, um, okay. You were lucky. I might not be around next time. There won't be a next time, I hope. Why were the Omeritas out to kill you? I may have overheard some things at Gamora that I passed on to the NCR. That's all, honest. Whoa, wait a minute. You work with the NCR? But Wolpez told me that you were a Legion informant. It was the Legion who sent me here to protect you. What? I only talked to Captain Curtis over at McCarran. I would never work at Slavers, honest. Ah, that explains it. We remember from our quests at Camp McCarran that Captain Curtis is a Legion spy. Martina may not have known that Curtis was Legion. Martina thought she was passing intel to the NCR, when in reality she was passing intel to the Legion. So, you're a spy. No. Well, not really. I mean, I'm not listening through doors or sneaking around or anything. People talk out loud and I just pay attention. The NCR likes to keep tabs on the activities of the families, and they pay me good caps to hang around the casinos and keep my ears open. So the NCR pays you to snoop on your neighbors? Dangerous work. It isn't normally. The NCR wanted me to just gamble and listen, nothing else. Well, what else do you do around here? I do odd jobs here and there, usually helping Sarah keep the vault tidy. I came to New Vegas to be a professional gambler. Too bad for me that the professional part isn't working out so good. But I love gambling, so I'm here to stay on the strip until they kick me out. 
All right, goodbye, Martina. Goodbye. Okay, not a bad gig. Martina came here seeking fame and fortune just like everyone else, but just like everyone else found it unattainable. It sounds like she has a nice little gig here. She gets free room and board helping Sarah Weintrib keep up Vault 21, and she gets changed from the NCR as an informant. There are worse ways to survive. If we head back to Wopez and Colta, we can say Martina is safe, and the Omerta thugs sent after her are dead. For now, anyway. She'll need to lay low while the Omertas are scrambling to find out what happened. They'll eventually send more men after her, but I'm sure I'll come up with a better solution to the problem by then. Of course, the final option, instead of attacking, is to pass a 50 speech check to say, The Legion is watching out for this woman. Go ahead. Cross them, I dare you. Shit. Look, we're just following orders. We, uh, need to take this up with the boss. And with that, the three Omerta thugs walk out peacefully. If we choose this option, Martina has all of the same dialogue, but either way, we complete this portion of the quest. We can now head back to the fort and check in with Wolpez and Colta. Wolpez, I was able to convince the Omerta thugs that crossing the Legion was unwise. Excellent. Had you simply killed them, the Omertas would have sent another group after Martina eventually. You saved me the trouble of coming up with a more permanent solution, and Martina is free to go about her business as usual. Well done. So talking the Omertas down is the option that impresses Wulpez the most. If we also talked with Martina after rescuing her from the Omertas, we find an option here with Wulpez to say, Martina said she sold her information to Captain Curtis in the NCR. I know the captain well. If you wish to be of service, go talk to him. Bear in mind that you are now responsible for guarding the secret of his true allegiance. If the NCR finds out, we'll know how that happened. And with that, we get the quest, I put a spell on you, but from the Legion side. I recently published a video called Spy in the Camp. You can watch it here, where we explored this entire quest from the NCR perspective at Camp McCarran. During the course of that video, we learned that Captain Ronald Curtis was really a Legion spy. But it took us a lot of work to uncover that information. Siding with the Legion, however, Wulpez gives us this information for free. And despite his threat here, if for some reason we fail this quest and Captain Curtis is discovered, we are not punished by the Legion. Now we can go to Camp McCarran and complete this quest for the Legion. In the NCR version of the quest, Captain Curtis is the saboteur. But in the Legion version, Captain Curtis is merely a go-between, and it is we who become the saboteurs. To start this quest, we don a faction disguise, head over to Camp McCarran, and check in with Ronald Curtis in his office beneath the stairs. Nice to meet you. I'm Curtis. I know who you are. I'm working for the Legion, too. Christ, keep it down. You want to blow the whole thing? We've worked years for this. But maybe it's good for you here. Shu knows about the leaks, and I'm supposed to find the spy for him. At first, I couldn't believe my luck. But since I haven't produced results, for obvious reasons, I feel him looking at me differently now. Maybe he's just thinking about putting someone else in charge. Maybe he's starting to suspect. Either way, it's bad for me. Especially once this next part goes down. How many years have you been on this assignment? It took me three and a half years just to make captain. Usually takes four, but I made sure there was an early vacancy. Caesar sees threats before they're even aware of them. He sent me long before we moved to occupy the Eastern Riverbank. And now all my work, all the waiting, is about to pay off. What's the next part? If you haven't noticed, the NCR bolsters its presence on the strip from here, sends troopers on the monorail and shifts. The monorail lets them occupy two positions for the price of one. It's a supply line that's immune to raiders and other hindrances on the ground. If someone were to cut that line, both positions would be much weaker, fragile. They know this, and they watch it like hawks. But I've been here a long time, and I've learned everything there is to know about it, and I'm going to blow up that train. He has the same response to both of these options, we can say. If you're gonna blow it up, what do you need my help for? I told you. I think they're starting to suspect me. You're going to help me cast away those suspicions. You're going to put the bomb on that train. I'll be sure to be in the presence of several reliable eyewitnesses when it happens. Then, we're going to pin this on a scapegoat. I plan on disappearing after this operation. It'd be a matter of time before they trace it to me. Figured out I was a frumentarius. But with your help, maybe I can stay on after all. Make plans for something grander. The scapegoat isn't me, is it? No, no. I wouldn't do that. 
Not unless I didn't have better options anyway. And I do. Tell me what I need to do. I have the explosive stash in a trash can, next to the ticketing counter, along with some incriminating documents. You'll pick them up and make your way upstairs to the monorail terminal. They change the guard there at 0900 and 1800 hours. There'll be a small window where there's no one guarding the train. What do I do when I'm at the train? Put the bomb in one of the vents inside the train on the back wall, towards the joint that connects the cars. Arm it, and get out of there. I've also left some bomb ingredients in with the explosives. You're to take those to the footlocker of Private Crenshaw. Crenshaw's a problem child. Lots of run-ins with his superiors. It'll be easy for them to believe he's working for the Legion. Is that everything? Report him to Colonel Shu. Do all that and we should be free and clear. Oh, and Crenshaw should be dead before you report him. Don't leave any chance for him to deny the bombings. Let's say he pulled a gun on you. I've got him on guard duty patrolling the tarmac just inside the south gate. And I reassigned the other guard, so he should be alone. So where do I find his footlocker? His footlocker's in the barracks in the main concourse. I'm not interested in helping you. You're on your own. Are you sure? Because I think the Legion would frown upon that decision. That's fine. I'm positive. Very well. Let me know if you should change your mind. You're right. I'll help. Good. Try to plant the explosives quietly if you can. You'll make both our lives easier. But first things first. Go offer your services to Colonel Shu. Tell him you'll work independently to find the leak. He's running out of options. He'll accept as long as you don't give him a reason not to. If he doesn't, then don't be surprised if you're the new scapegoat. So don't fuck this up. Well, Curtis has developed quite the plan. We start by heading to the opposite side of the airport terminal to talk with Colonel James Shu. He has all the same dialogue here that I covered in my previous videos on Camp McCarran. To continue with the quest, we navigate through his dialogue tree far enough until he starts to talk about a spy who's leaking NCR intelligence. Once he does, we offer to help him, and then we can move forward. Next, we need to pick up the bomb. Thankfully, it's close. On the southern side of this floor, we find a bunch of broken computers, suitcases, and other furniture stacked up against the wall, and garage doors leading to the other side of the airport. Here, in a garbage can against the eastern wall, we find everything we need. The completed explosive charge for blowing up the monorail, and the monorail sabotage plans, as well as the bomb-making supplies that we can use to frame Private Crenshaw. Opening up the monorail sabotage plans in our Pip-Boy, the papers here include schematics, recipes for explosives, and blueprints for a monorail car with several points of vulnerability marked. They are all marked with a stamp bearing the logo of Kaisar's Legion. Now, we can't frame Private Crenshaw for a crime that hasn't been committed yet, so first, we need to go blow up this monorail. To do so, we head up the stairs and move to the northeastern part of the terminal. This brings us to the door that leads to the monorail that takes NCR soldiers to the Las Vegas Boulevard station. Here, we find one soldier on duty. Now, he'll shoot at us despite our faction disguise if we don't have high enough reputation with the NCR, and at this point in the quest, I don't. There are two bodies here already, that's because I killed them when I came through here to get to the New Vegas Strip. I'm surprised they haven't decomposed by now. At any rate, Ronald Curtis told us that there's a shift change at 9 in the morning and again at 6 in the evening. So, hiding behind a corner and waiting until the appropriate time, we watch the guard leave his post. Quickly before his replacement arrives, we can sneak down the hallway and through the door. We arrive on the monorail landing. Moving quickly, we enter the monorail and head to the eastern side of the car. Here we find a vent that we can activate. As soon as we do... The train is about to depart. Please keep clear of the doors and then train any young children. We leap off it just in time to watch it shoot away. The deed done, we now have to frame Private Crenshaw. Turning around and heading back into the airport, we see that the replacement guard has not arrived yet. Good, that means we acted fast enough. Walking casually to avoid suspicion, we can head through the terminal and south down a hallway to the concourse. As we learned in my series on the McCarran Airport, it is here in the concourse where we find many of the soldiers' bunks. This is used as an NCR barracks. To find the bed of Private Crenshaw, we move to the southeastern section of the barracks immediately to the left, where we find a bunk bed with a footlocker at the end, labeled Private Crenshaw's Footlocker. To frame the private, we open it up and place all of the bomb-making supplies we found in the trash can, one Abraxo cleaner, conductor, fission battery, and wonder glue, as well as the monorail sabotage plans. 
Now we have him framed, but what if the NCR captures him? He's gonna claim that he doesn't know anything about the monorail, and he might be convincing. So this last step is to assassinate him to make sure he can't be questioned. We find him patrolling the second section of the McCarran Airport. The fastest way from here is to head to the supply shack where we found Contreras, and out the back door. Here we find Private Crenshaw standing guard on the ground next to an airport watchtower. To do this from stealth, we'll creep behind him and let the noise of the rain silence our footsteps. With Crenshaw dead, our scheme is completely set up. We now have but to check in with Colonel James Shu. So heading back into the supply shack, we can exit to the concourse and follow it through to the terminal. Then on the ground floor, we can check in with the Colonel. Yes, what is it? I know who bombed the monorail. What? Who? We have three options we can attack and say I did right before I assassinated the Colonel. You're getting ahead of yourself. Found you. But yeah, that angers the entire airport. Not exactly subtle. Pretty sure Wolpez would be displeased. So instead we can say, it was Private Crenshaw. He's dead now. Crenshaw. I've met Crenshaw at his disciplinary hearing. Still, this is hard to imagine. He was just a prankster. We have a number of options here, some of which make our story more or less convincing to Colonel Shu. We could say, prankster maybe, but you'd be surprised what some people are capable of. That doesn't implicate Crenshaw any more than it does anyone else. This isn't the resolution I was looking for when I assigned you to this. Given the dubious circumstances under which the confession took place, the NCR can't compensate you. Ordinarily, I'd have to arrest you for this, but we can hardly afford to waste resources in the wake of all that's happened. I think your freedom is compensation enough for whatever it is you've done here, don't you? Ooh, I see, Colonel Shu. Or we can try to pass a speech option where we say, well, Private Crenshaw confessed it to me, uh, right before he died. That's not exactly airtight. However, even though this is tagged as a speech check, this option always leads to a failure. And he goes on to say the same thing that he said if we didn't bother to pass a speech check. So the bottom two options automatically lead to a failure. Or we can pass the other speech check and say, well, he confessed it to me right before he died. Oh, and by the way, he used a word, frumentarius. If only we'd caught this sooner, before he got to the monorail. Still, this investigation has been valuable to us and you deserve to be compensated for it. The NCR appreciates the work you've done. Will there be anything else? Or if we successfully planted the bomb-making supplies and the sabotage plans in his footlocker, we find an option to completely avoid all of these speech checks and simply say he had explosives and plans for the operation bearing Caesar's emblem. I was afraid of this. Caesar's reach is longer than anybody guessed. And he goes on to reward us, just like last time. Strangely enough, no matter which of these options we choose, even if we fail the speech checks with Colonel Shu, thereby attracting his suspicion, Captain Ronald Curtis has the same response. Well? We find only one option when talking with Ronald Curtis. Shu bought it. You should be in the clear. Perfect. This has turned out better than I'd ever imagined. This will pay dividends for the Legion for a long time to come. I was with Shu when the bomb went off. He'll never think to investigate me for it. I'll make sure Caesar himself hears about your success today. And take this, courtesy of the NCR. I'm sure they won't miss it. Annoyingly, even if Shu told us that he didn't buy our story, the only option we find here is to say that Shu bought it. We get a huge dose of Kaisar's Legion fame, and we complete the quest. Now, we don't have to check in with Wopez and Colta after this. However, if we complete this quest, before completing the Finger of Suspicion with Wopez and Colta, he has different dialogue concerning Captain Curtis. I know the captain well. The destruction of the NCR monorail was his doing. Of course, if the NCR were to hear of that, it would be obvious who told them. 
With that task complete, there is one more thing we must do to really button up things here in the Mojave for the Legion. There are also precious few quests outside the primary ones that grant Kaiser's Legion fame. But there's a big reward if we become liked by Kaiser's Legion, so we'll head to the town of Nelson to see if we can ingratiate ourselves. We recall that the Legion recently sacked the town of Nelson, taking it from the NCR, and is now holding it. However, when we follow the road east towards Nelson, we see the road blockaded by NCR. With the NCR dead, we can loot their resources and continue down the road. Soon we find some boards forming a ramp on top of some rocks, which have a great view of the town of Nelson. We see a few Kaiser's Legion members roaming around. So heading down the road, have you come to Nelson seeking your death, profligate? We have a couple of options. If we have the terrifying presence perk, we can say, I came seeking yours, skirt boy, and attack. Brothers, help. But if our reputation is high enough with Caesar's Legion, uh, he doesn't attack here. None of the other Legionaries do either. The same thing happens if we choose the option, you just messed with the wrong gal, and attack. Brothers, attack. But again, thanks to our reputation, they don't. Or we could say, I'm just passing through. The Legion will decide that profligate, not you. Will you go before my Decanus for judgment or be killed where you stand? <laughs> Here we find that the terrifying presence option changes. We can say, good thing you're wearing a skirt makes urinating yourself go easier. But that just leads to attacking him. Instead, we can say, what's a Decanus? My commander, you ignorant degenerate. Now, will you go before Dead Sea? Yes, I'll go before your Decanus. Follow me. Make any trouble and you'll wind up on a cross, if you're lucky. Or we can skip that enjoyable conversation and say, I bear the mark of Kaisar. Forgive my challenge. I'll take you to my Deconus at once. Then we get teleported into a shack. Awe, why have you come to Nelson? Oh, I was just in the area, that's all. Not all of us have the luxury of coming and going as we please. Here, we stay put. Who are you? I am a loyal servant of Kaisar. And I thank my good fortune for the day that he plucked me as a babe from the shore of the Great Salt Lake. For five years, I have had the privilege of serving as a Deconus. If fortune continues to smile upon me, I will serve him until I draw my last breath. I hope that satisfies your curiosity about me, because I won't waste any more of Kaisar's time talking about myself. What's the situation here? My orders are to hold Nelson. So far, the enemy north of here has been too frightened to move against us. Why should it concern you? Why haven't you attacked the enemy? I have attacked the enemy. I led the assault on Nelson with two Contabernia against twice our number. It is Kaisar's wish that we hold this position. Our mere presence this side of the Colorado humiliates and demoralizes the enemy. You're demoralizing the enemy by leaving them alone? I do not question Kaisar's will. I do not second guess. I butchered this town. Those who weren't hacked limb from limb were forced to throw themselves from the cliffs. Three more I have just crucified. All this in full view of the enemy's spotters to the north. Yes, our presence here demoralizes the enemy. No offense intended. Carry on. Even if you are Legion, you are not my centurion. I do not carry on at your command. True to Kaisar. How can I help break the stalemate? What stalemate? It is Kaisar's will that I hold this position that I not advance. If you're so eager to see Camp Forlorn Hope fall, why don't you go attack it all by yourself? Well? Sounds like fun. I'll be right back. That remains to be seen. And with that, we get the quest, We Are Legion. We find the signs that the Legion has recently attacked this town all over the place. Even in the shack, we find spatters of blood all over the ground. And in the bathroom, we find the dismembered corpses of the NCR troops who died defending this town. Heading outside, we see a mound in the middle of the town. And here, the Legion have crucified three NCR soldiers. The Legion doesn't see NCR soldiers simply as men and women trying to do their duty, fighting for their homeland, doing what they think is right. They see them as profligates, degenerates. So when captured in war, instead of simply being executed, they crucify NCR soldiers to humiliate them and make their deaths as painful as possible. 
We explored the town of Nelson in great detail when I did my video on Nelson while completing the quests at Camp Forlorn Hope in favor of the NCR. You can watch that video by clicking here. To sum up, when the Legion raided the town of Nelson, they pushed the NCR back to a hillside just north of the town. The NCR then sent a bunch of troops to Camp Forlorn Hope, and this then became the effective front line of the NCR's battle against the Legion. The NCR have snipers in towers on a hillside near Nelson, and in Nelson, the Legion has soldiers blocking all roads that enter it. And between those two points is a no man's land. And here we find the corpses of soldiers who have died during the frequent skirmishes that go on here. Since I covered Nelson in a previous video, we won't explore it in depth here. But briefly, it's good to explore each of the houses here, because we find many dead NCR from the previous Legion raid. And on their corpses, we can loot NCR dog tags, which we can turn in for a quest later. Additionally, there is one house that has an extremely rare item. If we enter the house on the western edge of Nelson, we find a Nuka-Cola Victory, hiding behind an overturned refrigerator. This is one of only 10 Nuka-Cola victories that we can find in the entire game. After looting the town of other minor containers, we have to turn northeast and pass through No Man's Land to reach Camp Forlorn Hope. We go down a hill, pass through a sandbag barricade, and through a small ravine to enter No Man's Land. As soon as we enter, we see a skirmish going on at the other side of No Man's Land. Racing in to help our fellow legionaries, we can walk softly to avoid stepping on mines and then take out the NCR as we get closer. We attracted the attention of an NCR ranger from atop the hillside, and it looks like we were too slow. All of the legionaries got slaughtered by the time we killed all of the NCR. We are the last man standing. But wait, what's that? Nearby we see a soldier squirming. It's an NCR soldier and he's still alive. There's a still live mine right next to this guy. Both of his legs are gone, and if we get too close, uh-oh. Stay away! Oh. He told us to stay away. But wait a minute, how did this guy lose his legs? And yet there was still an undetonated mine right next to him. And then we realize what the Legion was doing here. The Legion has placed frag mines next to maimed NCR soldiers so that when the NCR comes down into No Man's Land to retrieve these men, they trip the mines and die. We see the same thing on a nearby corpse. Although this time I was able to get it. No Man's Land is strewn with corpses. Some of which are Legion, but none of the Legion corpses are booby-trapped with mines. All of the NCR ones are, and some are so close to the bodies that I can't disable the mine without looting the body. Time after time, I would loot NCR corpse, only to find it booby-trapped with a mine. Soon, I stumbled upon another maimed NCR soldier. Only this guy was missing both of his arms. Kill me! He asked me to kill him. 
Well, what do I do in this situation? On one hand, he's only missing his arms. He still has a lot of life ahead of him. On the other hand, there's no way the NCR is going to come down and retrieve this guy. Not with no man's land booby-trapped with mines. Let us not forget that I'm a legionary here, and this trooper's an enemy. I suppose the swiftest thing would be to kill him and put him out of his misery. But then again, as a member of Kaisar's Legion, we want these troopers to suffer for as long as possible, and with the least amount of dignity, so... Perhaps the most legion way to respond to this is to leave him. But he's not the only one. A short walk away, we find another. And this guy's injuries are completely different. A missing arm and a missing leg. Kill me. He too wants to be put out of his misery. But as a good legionary, we'll leave him to suffer. On one of the troopers, we find Forlorn Hope Letter Number 9. Dearest Andrew, Writing this seems pretty morbid, but tomorrow we march into no man's land between our camp and Nelson, which is crawling with Legion. The Major insisted I write this damn, if you get this, I'm dead letter, so here it is. What a crock. I have the luck of the devil and your love on my side, so I'll be home soon. Keep the porch light on for me. We'll party in New Vegas when I get back. I love you, Devon. This is one of many Forlorn Hope letters that we find scattered all over Camp Forlorn Hope. I read them all when I did my video on Camp Forlorn Hope that you can watch here. Now this no man's land doesn't appear in Fallout New Vegas anymore. We found it here during the original launch of the game, but when Obsidian released the Dead Money DLC, they removed all of the corpses from no man's land and replaced them with a hatch that leads to the bunker that takes us to the Sierra Madre. I'm not sure why the two were incompatible. Perhaps at the time Obsidian felt that No Man's Land was too dangerous and they didn't want anything to keep people from being able to play Dead Money. But it is clear that this No Man's Land is part of canonical Fallout lore. After all, it was available in the original version of the game and there are many notes all over Camp Forlorn Hope that refer to it. And so I restored it with mods so that I could show it to you in this video. After exploring No Man's Land, we must now scale the hillside towards Camp Forlorn Hope. We see one sniper's roost off to the northeast. Moving up the hillside to the west, we see fires from the camp off to the north, and another sniper's nest to the southwest. This must have been manned by the ranger we killed earlier, but there is someone to the right. Snaking up the hill, we can go into the sniper's roost to peer into Camp Forlorn Hope. We do see an NCR ranger in the sniper's nest to the east. We don't see very many other enemies, though there are a lot of red ticks on our Pip-Boy compass. Moving northeast, we see some soldiers sleeping on mattresses inside some makeshift housing. That was Quartermaster Maze, and with him dead, we fail his quest, Restoring Hope. By the time we're done, we'll fail all of the many NCR quests that we can get here. Sneaking back to finish off the trooper. We can jump down and continue forward. After looting the corpses, making sure to take the dog tags, we can move east down a path between some shacks and tents. Inside the tents, we find sleeping NCR. We do find one heavily armored NCR heavy trooper in a full suit of power armor nearby. It takes a while, but we get him, moving into the next tent. And the rest of the tents are empty. We can head over to the tower to loot the corpse of the ranger we killed earlier, and then scale the tower to see if we can get a better view. Sure enough. 
the red ticks on our Pip-Boy compass are dwindling. We're making good progress, but there is one more heavy trooper in a full suit of power armor. He was standing near the main command tent, and he keeps moving around. So descending from the tower, we can creep closer to try and pick some of these guys off. But he comes up behind us. <laughs> and then retreats. Just dang it, where did he go? We'll have to deal with him later, but it's then that we see Lieutenant Monroe standing to the northwest. Killing the lieutenant alerts some nearby troopers. Moving around to the other side of this tent, we can wait until his back is turned. There's still that heavy trooper. Thankfully, he has no idea where we are. Who's there? Uh oh. Almost got him, but he ran off again. Ducking between these tents, we can see if we can find him. Just saw a dog. Well, I'm sure he'll turn up eventually. With most of the camp's inhabitants dead, we can start to explore. Going into the quartermaster tent, we see that the safe is unlocked. And it's empty. The NCR is having such a hard time of this fight, they barely have the money to afford their troops, and hardly the food to feed them. Moving out of the Quartermaster tent, we can use the key that we found on Quartermaster May's body to open the storage shed. But we don't find much in here, a few fresh potatoes, some seeds, and a meager amount of scrap. The best we find in here are three first aid kits, though we do find a reloading bench. Heading out, we finally find the heavy trooper. And at last, he's down. With the camp mostly clear, we can run around and loot all the corpses, but there are a few more officers to kill. We need to track them down shack by shack. Moving into one. Right there. Goodness, that was much harder than it should have been. We killed some troopers, but no officers. So moving out, we can go across the road to enter the Camp Forlorn Jail. That's got you now. Yeah, this pistol is useless without my sneak criticals. But again, no officers. Moving out, we can finish off another trooper in a nearby tent. <laughs> Then heading outside, we can look north down the road, where we find one guard. The next tent is the medical tent. But inside, all we find are injured troopers. Well, what's the best Legion response? Do we leave them to suffer, knowing that we're going to kill all the doctors and they'll never receive medical treatment? Or do we kill them in their beds? Tough call. Not sure which is more evil. But the doc is an inn, so we need to head outside to find him. Thankfully, we find him one tent down. With that, we kill Doc Richards and fail his quest. That leaves only two more officers to go. Heading out of his tent, we approach the primary command tent. We see a ranger sniper at a nearby tower. Great use of those sneak criticals. And we find Major Pilati asleep in his tent. Major Pilati was the commander of Camp Forlorn Hope. With him dead, that leaves only one officer. We'll likely find her in the command tent, so after looting the corpses, we can open the tent flap to the command tent. And sure enough... Hey. I 
she went outside. With all the personnel of Camp Forlorn Hope dead, we can loot the meager resources we find here, and then return to Dead Sea and Nelson. Yes? I've slaughtered the enemy at Camp Forlorn Hope. A glorious victory. You must be very satisfied. I'll send word of your achievement. Perhaps Kaisar will see fit to send another Count of Berneum to occupy the camp. Here, take this. My blade. It was a gift from my centurion upon the defeat of the Sundog tribe. Why would I want a piece of crap machete? That blade has split the heads of... The only reason I give it to you is to force myself to earn another. True to Kaisar. You earned your blade. You keep it. You don't understand. I'll have to distinguish myself in battle to earn another. True to Kaisar. I'll carry your blade with honor. True to Kaisar. With that, we get Liberator, a unique machete and one of the best in the game. Liberator looks exactly like a machete. It sadly doesn't have a unique look. But it's a great little weapon, especially earlier in the game. It does 18 damage, which is 3 more than the broad machete we got in Courier's Stash, and 7 more than a typical machete. However, it's not the best machete. It does 10 fewer damage than a Machete Gladius. But it is the fastest machete in the game, doing 3.46 attacks per second. This brings its DPS up to 62.3. But that's not enough to offset the damage superiority of a Machete Gladius. A Machete Gladius will have a DPS of 84. Where the Liberator shines is that it does 2.5 limb damage. This is 0.5 greater than a typical machete and an entire point more than a machete gladius. So while a machete gladius has greater damage per second, it's less likely to cripple limbs. With Nelson defended and Camp Forlorn Hope destroyed, our next task is to visit Cottonwood Cove. We had to come through here to get to the fort, but we never stopped to chat with any of the characters here. To learn their stories, check out my dedicated video to Cottonwood Cove, which you can watch here. For now, we're here to find some guy who will take these dog tags off our hands. Following the road down the hill, we pass by many crosses and crucified people, including a crucified slave, to enter the main camp. The camp is large, but it has a simple layout. There's a stone structure in the middle of the camp that bears the Legion banner. This is where Aurelius of Phoenix lives. He is the man in charge of the camp. The tent directly next to his is the tent of Decanus Severus. He is second in command here. Cottonwood Cove is also where the Legion has slave auctions. Remember when we spent some time with our companion Boone, it was here where he discovered what the Legion was doing to his wife. We should by this time have quite a stash of NCR dog tags on our inventory. We can head on over to Decana Sueras to turn them in. Ah, way. Name your business. I have dog tags to turn in. In trade for what? We can turn these in for a variety of goods. For firearms, he offers us submachine guns, 10mm and 9mm, and laser pistols only. He trades for food supplies, leather armor or reinforced leather armor, dynamite or grenades, and ammo. But his selection is only 9mm, 10mm, 22LR, 357 Magnum, energy cells, or 20 gauge shotgun shells. If we don't want any of that, we can instead turn these in for cash to the camp's leader, Aurelius of Phoenix. We have now solidified the Legion's presence in the Mojave, and we've earned enough Legion fame to become liked. If we are liked or more with the Legion, the next time we check in with Lucius, he says, You've proven yourself to be a true friend of the Legion. We have a safe house available to our agents in the Mojave. Here's the key. It's an excellent place to rest and store extra equipment. In addition, one of our veterans, Atticus, visits the house every few days. While he's there, you can acquire items useful for stealthy operations against our enemies from him. And he gives us a key to the Legion safe house. We find the Legion safe house southeast of Nipton. It's directly northwest of the old nuclear test site. Traveling up from the nuclear test site, we see smoke rising at the top of the hill. As we crest the hill, we find a small little house next to a nearly extinguished campfire. We can cook at this campfire, and when ready, we can use the key to enter the Legion safe house. Inside, we find veteran Atticus. What do you want? Why are you here? I'm here to keep everything in order. As a friend of the Legion, I can offer you some supplies while you're here. Are you always here? No, there are other places that require my attention. 
Can I get some supplies? I have some goods collected during my travels. You may take something if you wish. And every now and then, veteran Atticus can give us magazines, a stealth boy, or cat eye. The magazine appears to be random. This time I got a Patriot's cookbook. We're inside some big living room. There's not much here. Though we do see a big Legion bull on the wall. So going downstairs, we find the main safe house. There are boxes and barrels of supplies off to the southeast, a couple of mostly empty lockers, and then three beds. One bed is covered in a chainsaw and a full suit of Legion Kenturian armor. This is the best Legion armor in the vanilla game. Perfect for the upcoming Second Battle of Hoover Dam. The Kenturian armor has a DT of 18, and the helmet has a DT of 5. Combined, this brings the damage threshold up to 23, which is only one less than a full suit of NCR Ranger combat armor. It's considered a medium suit of armor, even though it weighs a whopping 35 pounds, and the helmet weighs 3 pounds. To put that in perspective, the suit of armor weighs the exact same amount as a full suit of Ganon family Tesla power armor. On the bed next to this is a sniper rifle and a full suit of Legion Wexilarius armor. This is what Wulpez and Kulta wears. This is the second best suit of Legion armor in the game with a DT of 14 and the helmet has a DT of one. The armor weighs 26 pounds and the helmet weighs three, which makes them pretty heavy for the DT. And on the bed next to this, we find some time bombs, some Legion Praetorian armor, and a displacer glove. The Legion Praetorian armor is inferior to the other two with a DT of 12, but it's much lighter, weighing only 12 pounds. And with that, we are fully prepared for the second battle of Hoover Dam. In our next episode, we will check in with Kaiser or Lucius, inform them of our success, inform them of our successful assassination, and then join forces with Legate Lenius to move on Hoover Dam. That battle is the culmination of all of the Legion's plans, and if you want to make sure you don't miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. The Profligate's days are numbered. My shirts come in a variety of both men's and women's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. My designs also come on other products as well, smartphone cases, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the dramatic conclusion to the story of Kaiser's Legion.